Harvard Health noted that 40% of people will deal with sciatica at some point in their life and many, many more will deal with other low back issues. So if you find yourself being tight in the lower back, tight through the glutes, tight through the hamstrings, and even tight through the hip flexors, which do directly connect to the low back. You can see how all of that compression, all of the tightness would compress the sciatic nerve or cause some other low back issue down the line. Now for me personally, the solutions that I want to provide are not the quick fix temporary relief because I believe that you shouldn't even have to rely on getting temporary relief because you don't need it in the first place. And that's possible by building strength and mobility in the right areas so that you can do things with your back that other people can't, which means that you won't have that tightness and compression. Step one for me was actually opening up the problematic area. The sciatic nerve runs from your lower back all the way down to the foot, but most people feel it in their hamstring, in their glute, and in their lower back. So this elephant walk opens up all those areas. You put your hand on a surface as high as you need to start to not feel that sciatic pain. Find a level that you don't feel the pinching, then Bend and extend one leg at a time. You're rounding the back, which is great to relieve the nerve, and you're flossing it by actually bending and extending your legs over time. You're gonna go lower and lower. I built this up over months, but some people get it much quicker until you have the goal of fist to floor with your quads fully locked, legs fully extended. This is a mark of what anyone can achieve if you have nerve supply to your legs, you can achieve that. And when I did achieve that, I haven't had a single setback with sciatica or low back issues since I've achieved that and maintained it. And along that process, I'm also opening up my hip flexor, which is the opposite side of the hamstring and glutes. Now, why would you open up the hip flexor? The hip flexor directly connects to the low back, which is something that a lot of people forget. So if this hip flexor is tight, then it's gonna be tugging on your back constantly, and that sciatic nerve runs straight through where the hip flexor connects to the low back. So opening it up for me was super important. I like using pads. You can use it on a couch at home. I'll try and pop up a video of me doing that. Place your knee on the ground, flip your shin up, and this is where I'm at now. Knee is completely against the wall and I can go upright and you can see there's not much tension here, but I did start really, really far down. And if you can't fully bend your knee, just move your knee further from the wall to a level that doesn't hurt and start there. But for a long-term route, the closer you get to the wall with your knee and the more upright you get, the more you can actually train other movements like reverse Nordics where you're training that hip flexor directly. But you can turn this stretch into a strength movement by squeezing the back glute and you'll be able to feel that more intense through the hip flexor. But again, you're not doing this at a level that hurts, just at a level that's comfortable. And the last part of this that was notable for me was the back extension. Now, maybe you don't have this piece of equipment. Go on Amazon, save up 150 bucks. It's much cheaper than getting a thousand dollar surgery. And you might even have one at your gym already. And all I did was to start holding the top position with assistance. It's much better if you have something to hold out here, but I don't, I don't right now, so I'm just holding with the bench. But then you're just getting gradual movement, and again, only at a level that doesn't hurt. If you feel that pinching, then this is pointless. You're gonna train it at the level that you can tolerate right now. Increase the range of motion over time. Notice how I'm double leg right now. Get to a point where you can do 10 full reps, holding the top position, full control, on the way down, rounding through the bottom, and then this is where it was important for me. So the sciatic nerve breaks off down both legs. That means that training both legs individually, just like the elephant walk, is the best for sciatica. So once I was strong enough to do 10 full reps with both of my legs, full curl, full control at the top, I went to single leg and started training each side individually. And this is really where, I mean, I can use my back in ways that are, honestly, I never thought I'd be able to do. And I'll tell my story in a bit, but these single leg back extensions I've been building for years and they feel so good now that it's completely pain free. So again, 10 reps holding the top position for each. And then do not take this as a, oh, this week I'm gonna do top holds, then I'm gonna start adding range of motion the next week, and then I'm gonna do single leg reps three weeks from now. No, this is a long-term progress. I think for me personally, I mean, my case was horrible, but I think for me personally, going from just top holds like this, assisted to single leg reps took about a year. But that's real long-term progress. That's not short-term relief. Um, I have nothing against short-term relief, but if you see anything like, oh, how to floss your sciatic nerve so you get temporary relief, that's again, temporary relief. It's not long-term relief. This is long-term relief. So if you invest a year into building your back to the point where it doesn't hurt, you have a lifetime of having a back that doesn't hurt. I'm super grateful for the fact that I can do these single leg reps and put money in the bank for being able to have a healthy back for the rest of my life. Because I remember a time waking up at three in the morning with sciatica to the point where I had to literally 
roll out of bed and crawl until my sciatica finally let up and I could walk and every single step that I took was a shooting pain down the back of my leg. If you've had sciatica to that point before, then I can say I've been through it and what you're seeing here is a product of being able to go from that to not having back pain. So I just wanna encourage you, take the time treat this as a long-term solution, and you do have a future without back pain. Simply put, the stronger that I got in all of these movements, the less back pain, sciatica, and everything else that I had because my body was already strong enough to not deal with it in the first place. So I encourage you, try to adapt this style of training and just see the long-term improvements that you get from it. I'll keep posting more of these videos every single day, trying to piece it together for you. But if you do wanna make your own back transformation today, then you can join us on the Pain-Free Back Program on our app, which is called the Pain-Free App. I'll link that in the description and you can get the program and my coaching along the way to help you.